Mwahaha! Hey guys, welcome back to the studio. Ryan, aka Bloodshot Airbrushing, and we are back in the beginner series, part five. And it dawned on me, and uh, as much of this does, guys, this is a free flowing channel. There's no scripts. I got loose ideas, and I just ah, roll with it and see what <laughs> transpires. All right, guys, we need some stencils. We do, guys. It's one of the main tools of the trade. So let's build you guys a nice stencil. You can keep it with you. And I'm going to recommend a thicker cardstock for this one, guys. This is just a tab, just a divider from a binder. And I'm going to loosely draw out a French curve with a couple little kicks on it keeping one of the straight edges that is already provided with the nice people who ever made this bad boy. You know what? Maybe I'll even keep one of these dots too. Why not? Why not? All right, guys. Um, this is what we're going to sort of come up with. This seems to be my go-to guy. Now, over the years, guys, I have cut out just a vast plethora of different shapes and sizes of stencils guys but my go-to guy has always seemed to be my little uh kind of looks like a whale <laughs> i don't know what else to call him but uh i'm gonna get you guys to cut out something similar um i'm sure i could just go and you guys if you really want and you guys could just do a tracing on your screen and cut it out but the reality is, guys, if you're going to improve on your skills, as every beginner must, do it yourself. Um, you can go out and buy all these crazy kinds of stencils that all these other guys offer, guys. But they, at one point, cut their own. You can, too. Alright, guys. So with my thicker cardstock here, I'm going to, along with you, we're going to pencil out something that we're happy with. We're going to grab our trusty X-Acto knife and uh, number 11 blade, guys. I recommend this is like, if it wasn't for my airbrush and my paintbrushes, guys, this would be my absolute favorite tool of the trade. But the airbrush and the paintbrushes definitely come first and second, so we'll call this number three. All right, guys, let's get to it. I'm going to flip you guys around, sit you in, and you can check out how I do. Check it out. All right, guys, and I figured I would leave out just a couple of other ones that have been some more particular favorites of mine. Guys, but the reality is, is I've got so many. It's just a pile full. A literal pile full. All right, guys? This is great for so many different applications. And, uh... Let's start with our straight edge. So as you can see with my little whale, the little orca here, guys. So we're going to start with our little open U here, guys, using our straight edge. I'm just going to go bring that guy back around, give ourselves a nice semicircle. Ain't got to be perfect, ain't got to be this size, ain't got to be that size, guys. Next thing is a nice double back, right? So we got one curve, two curves with a nice transition. Great, dudes. And then let's just play around with it. Give us some open-ended, some close-ended use, maybe a swoop. And let's come back and let's get right back to that straight edge. A little different. It's all good. This one kind of looks more like a ghost with a shield. I don't know, man. Ooh, I don't know why I just did that. <laughs> let's cut them out. Now, it is more important that your cuts be nice and fluid than you stay on your lines. What I don't want you guys to do is be like, huh? Oops, oh, now I'm going to start again. Uh, oops. What happens is, is you get 
chunky edges. You just want to be nice and fluid. So take your time. Move your piece as well, guys. See guys, I'm not directly on it. All I'm worried about is giving myself some nice fluid lines. And don't throw that away guys, that could come in handy on another day as well. So there we go guys, it's not a bad idea as you see with some of these guys is I've got other shapes cut onto the inside. You can always draw yourself a circle, multitude of different ways to do so guys. You can grab yourself the trusty compass. If you, uh, if you don't have a compass, guys, you can actually use your hand as a compass. So if you find a pivot point with your fingers, spin that paper, and you will get a fairly nice circle, guys. So let's blast that out. Sometimes a circle isn't your best choice. Sometimes an oblong oval that again is fat on one end and skinny on the other end. Kind of like a little Easter egg. And that will give you some other edges that you can use your stencil on as well. You got a nice straight edge. You got a couple little circles. Now, granted, this may not be a perfect circle, but if you move it around, you can use it as such, guys. You can also trace out a circle, guys. Super simple. All right, let's spray some paint. Uh, let's recap. Let's recap before we spray some paint. Uh, you guys remember that big mess. That was a fun day. Ah, hey look, we're starting to get some control. We're learning some shading. And we're learning some line work. And I'm learning as well, guys. I moved from blue to red, and red did not show up as well on the screen as the blue did. So let's try purple today. Um, I think if we stay in the darker spectrum with the cooler colors, we will be on par. Uh, brace yourself. Brace yourself. Right, shake it up nice and good, guys. Um, some of these colors, I don't know if you can actually see the separation. It needs a form of agitator. Alright guys, just little ceramic balls. <laughs> yeah, I said balls. Then you're just going to want to give it a good shake, guys. The bottle. Get your minds out of the gutters. See that? It's helping to separate. Keep shaking it, guys. And flip her over and give her another good shake. Alright, that's better. Alright guys, now we can start playing around and practicing some lines with our stencil. Just gonna play around with kind of a clamshell effect here, guys. Just bringing it down and a little bit of paint. Um, we can also do a fish scale effect here, guys. And you've probably seen this done on the old school motorcycle tanks. It's coming back. Pretty simple. Pretty simple, guys. 
and we can also tackle some 3D shapes. Let's, uh, you know, do a quick sphere. Put a sphere up in here. <laughs> All right, guys, just quickly blasting in some color to the rear of it. Gonna pop in a drop shadow. And there we have achieved a quick little sphere. You know what, guys? I pulled this out so that we could get into doing some 3D shapes. And that ain't gonna cut it. <laughs> She's a little limp. All right, I got an idea. And no, it's not a little blue pill. I am nothing if not an innovator. Oh yeah, all right. Um, so for this one, guys, I'm just gonna grab a regular roll of masking tape. I'm sure a lot of you guys have one of these. And I'm just gonna blast myself a circle. So very calmly just dusting the entire surface. Okay guys, pretty simple. Um, this guy's got a light source coming from this way. Let's do a light source coming from this way and let's mix it up a little bit, guys. So now is where you can get into using your stencil. Find an area that works. And you can start getting in some of those colors. And just ever so lightly, guys, start bringing your tones around, saving wherever your highlight is going to be. So, obviously, the least amount of paint is wherever your highest edge or your highlight is. I'm just slowly blending my color towards my highlight, getting less and less paint on that surface as I get closer to my highlights. Guys, brain box, store it in there. Gravy, guys, now we have got a sphere. Quick and easy. I'm sure you guys know how to draw a cube. Let's draw one first rather than using a stencil. So cube it out. Ah, he'll be behind the circle. Ah, could have planned that a little bit better. All right, guys, this is where we can use our straight edge. So again, let's have our light source coming from this angle, which would mean this is our darkest surface and the darkest part of the surface will be the bottom. Um, it is at this point that you can run into using two stencils. We have our angle. Oh, and if you notice, I've got my little uh, dot coming through. Let's tape that up. Let's not have that happen again. So two corners now guys and i can blast that in quite rapidly take it one step further guys there's nothing saying you have to sit here and hold these with your fingers tape works great all right there we go we've got two down why not grab a third guys And while we're at it, why not grab a fourth? Now you've got your edges all mapped out nicely and you can very much just go in and give it some color. Being as our light source, I would still keep the bottom edge as your darkest. These are a little oversimplified, I believe but it is something to visualize. All right. 
get the other edges in, guys. So again, if the light source is coming from here, then, and it's okay to get a little bit of overspray over your darkest, okay, I'm not going to stress. We just bring it, and we bring it ever so lightly. Okay, guys, same thing with this one. Bring it towards your light ever so lightly. I should probably be using two guys, two straight edge stencils. So I'm not getting overspray, as you can see, I'm getting little lines. And there you go, you've got a fairly simple 3D cube, guys. All right, let's go one step further. Let's cylinder it. Again, our light source, ba bam So, our stencil. Let's find an area of the stencil that will work. Now it's pretty close, but it's not giving me the top edge. So I'm going to grab another stencil and just close that in. There we go. Now I can quite easily give myself a quick little blend. All right, guys, we've got our straight edge, got our curve. And you're just trying to find something that is close. So let's get that guy in there. And let's say you come over here. You can tape it. See how we got a little bit of a line right there? Well, let's fix that up. Light blends, guys. Super light. Just bring it up to where that line starts to disappear. And it's not going to disappear if you ain't got any paint. Put some more paint. Just a couple drops at a time, guys. I'm not trying to go crazy here. Back up here. Want some color to this edge? Alright guys, maybe we don't think that's quite dark enough. Well, let's hit it again. Alright, quick cylinder. Let's do a happy little gnome hat. All right, guys, the conical cone. Again, we've got our curved stencils. We're gonna find something that is close, something that matches. We're gonna get our straight edge right next to that, and we're gonna do the bottom. Now, if you're worried about this fold up here, just don't bring it all the way up. Just get your bottom tone in. Once that's done, bring your straight edge. Maybe you want two straight edges, get a nice point. And all we're doing is we're bringing from a big fade to a little point. Then if you want some color to this edge, bring a little bit fatter to the bottom, get in there. gravy guys what did we miss the pyramid all right let's bang out a quick pyramid i feel like you guys should be learning a lot here so i hope you're doing this as we go i hope you've paused a couple times and you're like yes ryan this is how we do this is how it goes all right the invisible line <laughs> Pyramids, pretty straightforward. And let's do this with some tape. I've only got so many fingers, but I've got endless, endless business cards. Oh, look at that. What did I say? Endless, <laughs> endless business cards.
and here guys I am once again just saturating it hitting it a little heavier at the bottom and just bringing that blend up to the top Going a little lighter a little more transparent and anyway, well this pyramid is apparently on another planet because they <laughs> I followed the light source of this guy rather than the light source of these guys. This guy is coming from, well actually this is more of a straight on. And then this guy is obviously coming from that direction. Guys, shadows. Alright, if you want a nice shadow that diffuses out, take your stencil. Instead of holding it straight up against your paper, that one's too wet. Gave me a line. Good thing I'm not trying to sell this to anybody. Hey guys. <laughs> Alright. So, if you want a diffuse shadow, instead of holding it straight up against your paper, Bring it out a little bit. See what that does? You get a nice sharp edge that diffuses out. Okay guys, same thing. Give yourself a nice diffused shadow. Lights course coming from that way. Shadow for this dude. paint and this is why I just do a couple drops at a time guys rather than waste the paint I can always add some more all right our cube diffused Same thing with our cylinder, nice diffuse shadow. And just get a little heavier at your base. Rock and roll guys, I hope you learned something today. Keep practicing guys, I know you've got pages that need to be filled. Um, if you can't find some cardstock guys, just rip a page out of your scrapbook. Your journal, your airbrushing journal. This ain't scrap, this is memories, man. All right, guys, I hope that gets you a little further in your 20 hour challenge. I hope you guys are at least hour five. <laughs> I don't know where you guys are at, but I hope you're putting in the time. I hope you're practicing boot camp beginners, you airbrush wielding warriors in training all right guys i hope that helps you along your journey i hope that gives you another couple hours to practice we will see you back here in a couple weeks study 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 all right guys and as i am teaching and you are learning if there's any questions that you guys have hit me up in the comments drop me a line i will get back to you guys and as always like follow subscribe Thanks for coming along for the ride. Cheers. Still undecided on the cover of this journal, guys, so hit me up with your feedback. What should we paint on the cover as a beginner's tutorial? And check out my other airbrushing beginner videos and my hack videos to get you guys rolling. Rocking and rolling on your airbrushing journey. Cheers.